Readers, it is exciting work that you'll be doing from this lesson forward. You'll be studying the work of a particular author of your choice. Your work with this author will be a big deal. You'll be reading the author across the whole rest of the unit. Each of you has already read at least one story by your author, and I know you're going to read this next text differently because of that. You will probably draw on all the work you did in the last bend, figuring out who is telling the story, what kind of character this is, and thinking about what shapes that character's perspective. You will use this anchor chart as a reminder. I want you to think, what work have you already been doing, even at the beginning of your book? What are you struck by so far about the characters in the novel you're reading? As we move into the new work of this bend, I want to share a thought, an image, that I've seen in poetry, fiction, essays, and in photographs and paintings. And maybe you've seen this too. That's the idea of how where there is darkness, light can still get in through tiny breaks or cracks in a window or someone's heart. I love this image. It makes me think about how even things that aren't perfect, especially things that aren't perfect, have hidden beauty in them. Those cracks, the places where the light gets in, are the places where you can really see and know a person, a character. The light shines in and illuminates parts of the person that hadn't shown up before. There are moments in our lives that reveal a lot about a person. The moments when the light gets in, moments that act like a window into the beating heart of the character. In a book, those are the moments when we, as readers, want to pay special attention as we read. In this bend, we're going to study those window moments closely, letting those moments teach us about what really makes this character who they are. We're going to read more of Matt's story, How to Transform an Everyday, Ordinary Hoop Court into a Place of Higher Learning in You at the Podium. We stopped right when our narrator gets to the Mooney Gym. Remember, that's after the cop has hassled him, after his dad's been pulled out of the factory, after he has run across town to get to the gym. Are you ready? Remember, we're looking out for the specific window moments that make us say, whoa, that's it. That's the moment that makes me really see this character. Now, I might stop us as I'm reading, but you can stop too when you notice a place that strikes you that feels so significant that lets the light in, you might want to pause the video and jot some notes in your reading notebook. I'll give you a tip. Often, you're not sure why a moment stands out. You just have a feeling it does. Louise Rosenblatt, a famous reading researcher, says to pay attention to these moments. So let's do it. Sentenced to the bleachers. While you wait for gym manager Jimmy to arrive by bicycle with his massive ring of rattling keys, listen to the grown men around you. To the uninitiated, they are uneducated. They're poor. Black, crass, shifty, steely-eyed, a reason to cross the street. But over the course of the summer, you will soak up everything around you, and you will hear the brilliance, the poetry, the philosophy, the verbal dance of encore court banter. They will laugh harder and more often than anyone you've ever known, and you will laugh too, especially a few weeks into the summer, when they turn their wrath on you. They'll begin by calling you Mexico, even though your Spanish is suspect at best. They will ask you why you're inside a gym and not crouched in a field somewhere picking strawberries or kicking around a soccer ball. They will tell you you're too young to ball with them, too skinny, too light in the pocket, too soft. Wow. Let's look at this a moment. 
The main thing is to trust that there's a reason this moment stood out. When that happens, revisit that moment and think about the possibilities. So I want you to think, was there one part that stood out for you? What strikes you inside that part? Did you notice the way the characters talk about race? They were talking about a lot of stereotypes and even the language that they used as they were talking about race. Did you notice how tough the players are on each other and on the narrator? Readers, what's cool about the reading work that you'll be doing is that you need to trust yourself to pause, even if you're not quite sure that something seems like a moment that lets the light in. So, Let's keep reading, and you'll need to trust your feelings. Pause the video when you think there's a moment, even if you're not quite sure why. Come back in three years, they'll say, or maybe ten. You will laugh your way through all of this, sensing that their digs are some warped version of acceptance. A week in, a guy everyone calls Mr. Unleaded because he's a night manager of a nearby gas station will tear into you about your long, skinny, no muscle having arms. And without blinking, you'll fire back a dig about the ghetto Superman tat sketched into his right forearm. And why would you knowingly walk into a gym full of kryptonite? Everyone loitering outside the gym that morning, waiting for Jimmy, will roar in laughter and stomp their feet in bump fist. And to your surprise, it'll be Mr. Unleaded who laughs hardest of all. But as much as you'll begin to blend in off the court, on the court, it will be a completely different story. That first day, you won't get into a single game. Not one. You'll follow everyone inside the dark gym, set down your stuff in the bleachers like they do, hit the court with everyone for a handful of warm-up jumpers. But when it comes time to select squads, you'll find yourself on the outside looking in. When you try to call next, they'll ignore you. You'll ask the overweight knee-braced dude if you can run with his squad. He's still three games away, but you got all day. He'll nod and say in a deep smoker voice, You down, young buck, I got you. But an hour later, when his team is finally set to take the court, he'll drop you for a balding big man. At first, this basketball blackballing will tear you up inside. You know you can hang. Your jumper is as pure as anyone's in the gym, except maybe this guy they call Dante, who never misses. Sure, these dudes are bigger and stronger and more aggressive, but at the very least, you could be a dependable distributor. You know where to put a lob on the fast break so your big man can mash it down with a guttural growl. You plead with the guys standing on the sidelines. You gotta let me play, man. I can ball, I swear. But these outbursts of self-promotion will fall on deaf ears. All you'll do that first day is hoist a few jumpers between games, then retreat back to the bleachers to watch. The next day, it'll be the same thing. The day after that. Those first two weeks, you'll participate in a grand total of one run. If you can even count the end of the day, three-on-three -three debacle you spend guarding a homeless man wearing soulish Timberlands. Readers, take a minute to gather your thoughts. What were you struck by? Remember, it's important to not only pause at moments that strike you, but also to think about what that moment illuminates about the person, the character. Readers, let me give you some feedback. When you're reading and you find a part that's interesting, you'll want to think, what about the story makes you think that? 
it's in the details of the text that you'll really begin to have some interesting thoughts about your reading. One afternoon, it'll hit you especially hard on the long walk back to the car. You'll keep quiet on the drive home, then retreat to overturned bucket in the alley behind your building. Here you'll have a serious heart-to-heart -heart with yourself. Sure, it's the best pickup you've ever seen, but they don't even let you play. They're prejudiced against Mexicans, or soon-to-be ninth graders, or both. Why wake up before the crack of dawn, sleep folded up in a VW bug, just to sit in the bleachers all day? Nah, man, this won't work. You're a baller, not a spectator. At least at the court down the street, you can work up a sweat. On your way into your room that night, you'll break the news to your old man. Just so you know, Pop, I'm not driving down with you anymore. Thanks for taking me all those times. He'll look up from his beer with a frown. What happened? You're a pretty tough kid. Nothing much gets to you. But for some reason, his question will put a lump in your throat. It's just, I don't even know why, but they won't let me play. Secretly, you'll be hoping for a little piece of fatherly advice here, but you won't get it. He'll chuckle instead and turn back to his beer. You won't set your alarm that night. You'll sink into bed, excited by the thought of sleeping in, relieved to be downshifting back into the old routine. But something odd will happen. The next morning, your body will instinctively wake up at 4.30. You'll sit up, rubbing your eyes, confused. Your hands will unconsciously reach into the dirty clothes for your hoop gear, and your feet, against ex executive orders, will carry you out to the car a few minutes before five. When your old man sees you standing there, he'll chuckle again, but he won't say anything. Fascinating, right? I want you to think for a moment. Go back into the text. Return to the details in the story and reflect on what you just read. Readers, as you were thinking about what you read and went back into the text looking for details, I'm wondering if you noticed this part. It reads, you're a pretty tough kid. Nothing much gets to you, but for some reason, his question will put a lump in your throat. It's just, I don't even know why, but they won't let me play. Readers, when you're talking about these window moments, it will pay off to return to the specific details in the text and then add what that moment and those details are making you think and realize. So keep thinking, but make sure that you're going back to those details and pushing yourself to say what they're helping you to see. Let's take a moment to think about the work you might do today and moving forward. I can imagine that you might want to look back at the short stories you've read to reconsider parts that act like windows to deeper parts of a character. But I'm going to suggest that you save that for a day or two and instead read on in your author study novels. That way you'll make steady progress in these books and there are sure to be moments that feel like windows. Flag those with a post-it note so that you can reflect back and think more about them. Okay readers, off you go!